Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of To Be Released Solo. I'm Wokey and as always I am here joined with Snake Drinking Water, the unofficial mascot video, uh, unofficial mascot for To Be Released. And I am once, here, once again here solo until the time comes where I can comfortably record with Zenrot any day of the week that I want. Uh, this is the only video series long running at this point that talks about Dokkan. At this point, there's more people who talk about Dokkan in podcast format, but we are technically the first and oldest if you follow the weird lineage going from to be released solo, to be released modcast, and then there's a branch in that where there's mod ca- modcast 2.0 with the brand new mods of the Dokkan Red at the time we wanted to do it. But if you go back all the way to original modcast, that's where this is from. And we're here to talk about Dokkan, so I hope uh, you end up liking this video. If you do, you can leave a like. It does help me a whole bunch to let me be know people actually care. <laughs> but let's get into it. Uh, today we have in our format, because I actually format to be released solo, let's talk about the current Celebration Dynamic Part 2. How's it going so far? Well, uh, let's see. We have the Guru event, which is a scam. It's 100% a scam. I have never seen... I think the biggest hyping up of something, and to be fair, I think you can probably place a tiny bit of blame of that on the YouTubers who, for some reason, are usually optimistic about Dokkan when they really shouldn't be at this point. I understand having love and passion for it, um, and so you always feel like, especially with Namek being a, a celebration so many were looking forward to... Um, once they heard news that there was going to be some kind of event that's like, oh man, this is for link leveling? Oh, that's going to save us so much time. Turns out it's it goes from like 1% rates to 4%. And you can only do it once per day. And it costs a lot of stamina. And I've already had it be the case where I did it and then did not get any form of link leveling. So I'm safe to say it's a scam. I hope it goes away and never comes back. Because if this actually becomes our link leveling thing from here on out that's once a week oh boy you want to talk about something fucking useless this thing once a week is unbelievably useless i don't see anyone who would want it all around all all all, 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 all along it doesn't make any sense to me it's not what you need for link leveling it's actively shit and they need to get rid of it and that's basically starting part two off with a banger now let's talk about something that you actually can't complain all that much about it's the bulma event you do it you get 10 stones it's unfortunately shared so based off of how many people get stones that means we will eventually get less stones but i'm gonna assume because dokkan is dokkan they actually have a set amount for us and they're not telling us so when we hit that set amount that they're comfortable with us getting that many stones they will just cut us off and be like okay you guys reached it, even though we reached it either a long time ago or we're not close to reaching it at all. Ten stones. Perfectly good. Nothing really to complain about. Simple. I don't know. I really understand why you have to have a fight. It seems kind of pointless to have a fight, but maybe it's there so you can <laughs> potentially link level, <laughs> which is really funny to think about after talking about Guru. Um, so yeah, can't really complain all that much about it. I'll enjoy Tessa Toes while it's coming. Uh, next, we have the Bardock, which is the ta- challenging event that I think... I don't know if I haven't seen many people speaking about this event, so maybe I'll be the first to say this. Yo, this event is bad. This event is glorified uh, punching machine. Only... No, not only worse. It, it is, yeah, it actually is worse, because it only really benefits pure Saiyans. Complete an utter trash. I cannot believe that they made this. And sometimes it's also unbelievably easy if you got lucky and you have LR Broly like me, you're able to beat the physical uh the the physical the STR stage, I guess is the right way of saying it cuz Broly is STR so you use him on the STR CR stage against the physical enemies, not the physical stage which would technically be against it. You get what I'm saying. Kind of pointless. Um, very dumb for them to lock it behind pure Saiyans being able to do so much damage when there isn't really an AoE for every single element, and most of them are, well, at least one of them is an LR. Two of them are an LR, three of them, because I forget Vegeta Nappa is an LR, and so is Majin Vegeta, but Majin Vegeta LR, I think, kind of sucks for the event. At least when you compare him to Broly. Broly is just so good. 
And then you have Physical Broly, who is the Super Broly, who loses his ability to AoE. <laughs> it's just not good. I don't think the event is very good. I like the idea of them trying to make AoE units be something more useful than the World Tournament every once in a while. But this is not the way, man. Not when you're saying that this is the challenging event. Especially when you limit, put such hard limits on it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this, this event at all, this Bardock event. I think it's actively bad, but it's also not like offensively bad, like Guru. I think it's actually pretty easy to just skip. And maybe when you eventually do pull the unit, you'll just get the wins for it. This Guru, unequivocally, if this is shit, this Bardock actually reaches okay. Cause I think there's actually potential for some people to actually like be like, oh no, but I actually want to test out my pure Saiyan. Only my pure Saiyan units against this type of event and see how I do. Or maybe down the road when Power Creep is so bad, they'd be like, Oh no, man, this this guy's not even pure Saiyan. He destroys this Bardock event. It's crazy. And I'm like, alright, more power to you. I don't think it's very good. I'm the kind of person who's going to do this. Once I beat it once, never again. Same with Punching Machine. Once it's done once, get the hell out of my face. Not, no longer interested, but that's how I feel about that. Uh, of course, we got the other side of uh, the Frieza. I guess what is this challenge event called? The super, the super best friends attack the universe with great power and responsibility. The fuck is his name? <laughs> what is this event called? It's okay. One moment. Now I need to find the actual name. I forgot it last time too. It's something very long and very dumb. All right, let me see. Uh, no, it's not under limited events. It is under challenging events. Again, I actually think that they actually knocked it out with, even though I'm complaining about the long name, I actually think they've done a pretty good job. The collection of epic battles. Uh, now you have the other side of that epic battle now in the game. So you have one where the end boss is goku and there's one where the end boss is frieza and the missions are so now that i've done a little bit more um i don't like that full power is on the goku side because i think full power kind of is shit right now <laughs> only full power is a very good category um so it kind of actually makes it feel like if you don't have that frieza you just kind of sol for a lot of it which kind of sucks but maybe that's just me on that one if you have the Frieza, then it's not really a big issue. And then for Goku's side, you've got Blanic Namek Saga, Super Saiyans, and the Legendary Existence. Uh, yeah, not bad. I haven't actually tried this yet, but if it's like the other one, I assume perfectly fine. A little bit hard. Decent rewards. And yeah, good on them for heading the second high half of it. Next we got... Faded History, the Saiyan in Rebellion. Where, this is where I actually feel, I think I'm one of the only people who feel like Namek Saga Vegeta deserves to only be free to play and not a banner unit, but, you know, fair enough, different strokes, different folks. This one actually has the very cool combo of Krillin in the Namek costume with Vegeta, who they switch out, which is based off of the scene of Dende and Vegeta just swapping places after getting beat up a whole bunch, which is pretty nice. Uh, very nice uh, combo of dudes. I think it ends up being probably the case of you have the weirdest dude under Turtle School with Vegeta and his weird links because he has the Krillin categories, but he has the Vegeta links, which is a very funny thing to think about. I think most exchange units, I think what's the other odd pairing of exchange units? It is Hercule into Boo because Boo has the weird link set and everything. Because every other exchange unit kind of makes sense, like Nappa into Vegeta. The androids into 16, uh, Goku, uh, Goku, Goku into Gohan, Vegeta into Trunks, all make sense. But for this one pairing, it's really weird. And then let's go down some other ones. The, uh, the Ginyu Force continued to be rolled out slowly. Sure. Payton uh, did an update, who cares? And next we have the Super Saiyan half of the Freeze event, which is, you know, 30 stuns is good. And he's cool. He's basically the same unit, but suffers more link-wise. I think that's fair to say, that his links are a little bit all over the place. Because he has, like, 
He goes from Super Saiyan 2, which is like, okay, kind of like Super Saiyan 1, Super Saiyan 3, completely different link set, Super Saiyan God, completely different link set, and then Super Saiyan Blue, which is a similar one to Super Saiyan God. So, a little bit funky. But yeah, those are the events going on currently in Dokkan. Now, here's the next thing I wanted to talk about, which is... Well, actually, I should say this at the end. It leads into it. So, Part 3 is going to come up eventually. I don't know what they're going to add in Part 3. Probably another EZA. I doubt there will be banner stuff. But I could definitely see another EZA of some kind. And that being said, we're just going to have to wait and see what it is. And that being said, I am now entering the next segment of To Be Released Solo, which is the Wokey Plea. Please do not Dokkan Awaken LR Bardock or LR Trunks Physical, both of them. I don't understand people at some point. Um, and sometimes I think Dokkan doesn't help either, because the Bardock shit got started because we have that stupid Japan versus global thing where for some reason it is Bardock and Frieza when they don't really have anything to do with Namek and you can make the case, oh, but Bardock's death is the inspiration for Namek because he sends off Goku. Bullshit. It doesn't matter. You could cut out all that shit and it doesn't matter. Goku doesn't give a fuck about his dad. You shouldn't give a fuck about Bardock. If you like him, that's different. But in terms of Namek and the actual Namek saga, that shit's extra. Nobody cares. <laughs> Nobody thinks actually thinks that because of Bardock's amazing things, Namek happens. No. Come on. Not related to Namek Saga, and he does not belong on the category of Namek. And for Trunks, it's pretty obvious. Like, he's not Namek Saga. He's androids. He's not even in the same fucking league. You can't even say the thing of, like... Oh man, it's the end end bit. It's like, no, it's the start of the next saga. This is extremely stupid. The only one who really kind of deserves it from Namek at this point is the Goku, the Super Saiyan Goku. The the one that it starts off as a normal Goku and then he dokons into a Super Saiyan Goku. I don't know why people are like this. Could you imagine any other you like imagine uh the tournament of power and instead of getting LR um, Frieza and Goku for an easy A. They decided to do an uh, LR, an easy A for fucking the Broly movie. It wouldn't make any sense. But that's the way people are looking like when they're suggesting they give an easy A to these LRs that are not related to the Namek saga, to me at least. Like, imagine you go through the Boo saga and then your part three is like, oh man, are we gonna get some more cool? Um, Boo Saga? No. Here's uh, Haruta Garn. And it's like, what? It's like, whatever, man. It takes place after the Boo Saga. Counts, right? No, it doesn't. It would be a disappointment. If it was Andrew, if it was during the uh, Cell Saga, if after Gohan and Cell, literally right after, was Bojack? No. This doesn't make any sense. So here's my plea to the people of Dokkan and in general people who play Dokkan. If you want to see Bardock get an easy A, LR Bardock get an easy A, and Physical Trunks get an easy A, I'm with you. I own both of them. I would love nothing more for them to get an easy A. What I'm saying here is, is that it does not fit the thing, the, the theme of the theme at all. And I also disagree with Dokkan already putting the Bardock stuff in. I really do not want to see this Bardock get a, an easy A at all. When it comes, at least in during this celebration, if they want to do it after the celebration, perfectly fine. But if this counts as the end of Namek, it is a wasted opportunity. This is their basically one opportunity for them to buff Namek because I doubt we're going to get any more buffs for Namek. And if they waste it on Bardock, who is not on <laughs> Namek Saga, I think it's a waste of everyone's time and effort. And just no, please don't do this. And I think that is the end of the Wokey play. All right, let's go on to the big boy scale, shall we? On the big boy scale today, we have Piccolo and third form Frieza. Let me quickly pull up exactly what they do so I can at least say, yo, this is what they do before I give my completely unbiased look at them. We're going to start with Piccolo. Uh, he's the Planet Namek Saga category. Uh, key plus three, attack and defense and HP 130%. His super attack causes supreme damage to enemies and lowers attack and defense uh, by one. No, not by one. And it lowers it lowers their attack and defense. And it is by 20% for five turns. 
his passive skill attack and defense 60% plus an additional attack and defense 20% at the start of each turn up to 60% plus an additional attack and defense 20% for each attack performed up to 60% high chance um, of randomly changing key spears of a certain type to rainbow recover 6% HP per rainbow obtain planet sam <laughs> Planet Namek Saga category allies keys plus three attack and defense forty percent. Uh, so the one thing about this Piccolo that I think is pretty obvious is that it's very unfortunate that I think he actually is pretty good. The problem here is that his link set is a Piccolo link set, and Piccolo's best link partner is a Piccolo, and there's not a lot of that going around. <laughs> there's just not. It's the sad state of things of Piccolo's one of Piccolo's best partners is Piccolo, but we don't have currently a lot of units that are like units that swap into Piccolo. We honestly need more. But once they do start adding some more units like that, I think it'll be a bit better. The unfortunate thing is, of course, he is pretty tied to Planet Namek Saga with that key plus 3 attack and defense 40%, but the rest of him is actually pretty good, and I think that part right there is going to make him still pretty solid in any other team that he might find himself in. Category is Resurrected Warrior, Plant Namek Saga, Namekians, Worthy Rivals, Bond of Master and Disciple, Saviors, Battle of Wits, Connected Hope, and Gifted Warriors. Yeah, it's tough. In theory, though, you would have at least uh, the LR Goku on that, on a, lot of, on a decent uh, number of these categories, so it would still be kind of pretty good to have them there, but still... I can understand where some people are coming feeling a little bit underwhelmed, but I still think he's pretty damn solid. How does he rate on the big boy scale, though? This is Piccolo. Everyone's favorite. Everyone loves Piccolo. I think it's only fair. Pip Piccolo on Namek. He just absorbed a man. He feels great. I love it. And he's beating the crap out of Frieza, and then Frieza says third form, and he basically beats the shit out of him, batters him. I still think that deserves a 5 out of 5 big boy. This is a very big boy. This is big green boy. Everyone's, everyone loves the big green boy Piccolo, and I think he deserves a 5 out of 5. Especially since it's been so goddamn long since the last banner Piccolo that was actually good. You gotta give him something for that. Next, on the big boy scale, we've got everyone's favorite form, Sword Form Frieza. <laughs> he leads Sworn Enemy with 130% to all stats, and his super attack is the Crazy Finger Beam. Raises attack. Raise the defense for one turn and causes supreme damage to the enemy, and that attack raise is 30% attack for 99 turns, and raise the defense by 30% for one turn. Um, passive skill is attack and defense 70 point bleh, attack and defense 70% plus an additional attack and defense 7% for each attack performed. Up to 70%, high chance of launching up to two additional attacks, each of which has a high chance of becoming a super attack. Sworn enemies, category allies, key plus three, attack and defense 40%. And this guy's pretty obvious, because he's, he's the perfect linking partner for that new Frieza. Makes him extremely good. Uh, he's extremely good himself. There's not really much you gotta say. The one thing you can probably say is that the crazy finger beam... It just is a little bit funky at times, but it's literally the only move he does and is known for, so I think it's perfectly fine. In terms of his link skill and category, it's all perfect because it goes directly <laughs> with full power Frieza. Uh, so this is pretty obvious. Where does he land on the big boy scale? He's going to have to have a 5 out of 5 big boy. I really do like third form Frieza because he looks like the Xenomorph from Aliens. And it's surprising that we went so long without an SSR for this form, and I'm not counting Transforming Frieza. So good on them for releasing one, making him so good that chances are you'll never see him again. That's how good he is. So alright, that's the end of the big boy scale. So just to go back, again, Piccolo and third form Frieza both get a 5 out of 5. So let's move on to some questions. Now give me one moment as I look them up. And I'm back, everyone. Welcome back, because here's the final part of To Be Released. It's questions. Thanks again to everyone who sent in their question. If you want to send in a question, wait for either of you can ask a question in this, and the reply to this video. And a reply. You can just leave it down below and then put a question or something so I know that you don't want me to answer it specifically. Otherwise, I'll just save it for the next episode. 
Um, you can leave it on my YouTube when I ask for questions, or my Twitter when I ask for questions. One person in here asked it on the Discord <laughs> in the general games, which was very uh, nice, because it was actually the easiest way to get a hold of it. So if you're in that Dragalia Discord, <laughs> feel free to join and ask questions. But anyway, here goes the questions. First, we have Rabbit Fire Toaster from the Discord asking, Question, would you say Goku is, contrary to popular belief, overall better than Frieza when you consider he stacks defense on the easily obtainable 12 key, doesn't lose stats, and potentially allows other stackers to stack since he isn't critting 90% of the game's population. Rabbit Fire Toaster, thank you very much for the question. I think your question is extremely valid. Basically, you're asking... No, no, yeah, I know what you're asking. Um, what you're saying is very, very true. So here's the one thing you kind of have to think about Frieza when it comes to the overall team. Is if you have two Friezas, then really it doesn't matter. Both Friezas are just winning you the game. That is your th that is your basic overall, and that is what you understand how you're going to win the game. I'm going to win this game because I have Frieza, I'm going to go crazy with Frieza, pow pow pow, Frieza wins. Easy fatality. Um, but if you're actually in such an event that requires something like Stackers, and for whatever reason you're using Frieza and he's an extreme foe and you're not, or you're not fighting Goku, later on some of those Stackers that you need to kind of attack a little bit get a little bit problematic, and I, to be fair I also think this is true for Goku is that when you have a passive that kind of requires you to be in the first slot and you're crazy broken and there's others that need stacks as well you can kind of interfere with a lot of things i think the one thing that's frieza's kind of got against him compared to the goku is that i don't think goku gets key her so he ends up just constantly um he, he doesn't constantly stay at the top key, he always stays at his regular 12 key or the other, depending on rotations and orbs and such as that. But Goku will, uh, but Frieza will definitely <laughs> be powerful and be big, beefy, and powerful. Um, so it kind of, you know, it kind of depends on certain events. Um, I think it's pretty obvious, like, the people, I assume the people who automatically think, like, this is easy, one step far away, no questions asked, they're memeing. <laughs> because they don't, because actually engaging in Dokkan discussions in which you put characters on a certain pedestal doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, like, the type of events, could you technically say that, um, Goku and Frieza, none of this, none of this matters in something like Extreme Super Battle Road or Super Battle Road? Where the fights are short and stacking kind of loses a lot of its prominence would you then say like some of the other stuff and the answer ends up being that it's by a case-by-case -case basis and you have to actually play the game to know it when you take dokkan out of context and just say man look at this it looks like this wouldn't it be like this the answer is usually no because i've used um full power freeze and i'm like man he kills a whole bunch didn't really stop the other stackers because I only had really had one on the team and I didn't have two. Maybe it's a different story if you have two. Um, but he definitely helped win the game super easily, and the other teams we just had to survive. And the other side, the other side had the um, the stackers of some part. Of course, his stacker partner ended up getting royally screwed over, and that's when I learned maybe I shouldn't put third form, transforming Frieza with him, and just put third form there. But anyway, I'm, I digress. I think your question is extremely valid, and it's something to think about, and if you're not thinking about it, you're probably one of those dudes that just argues based off of math. Shots fired. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for the question, I hope that answered something. It is something to think about. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really think about Dokkan in a lot of ways. But uh, here, what I know, here's what I know, full power freeze and he go big like monkey, he attack hard. Here's what I know about Super Saiyan Goku. He go hard. He see, he is monkey. Well, technically, I guess full power freezer would be anti monkey, but you get what I'm saying here. Anyway, next question comes in from Raiders fans, and I believe this was from Twitter. And he asked, "Am I saved from hell if I stop playing Dokkan, or am going? Am I still going to be banished to the deepest depths of hell?" Uh, Raiders fan, this is really hard. You're gonna have to basically confess your sins. If you're a Catholic, it's very easy. You go to the Father and you say, Father, I have sinned. I've been playing Dokkan a whole bunch. And he'll automatically know, well, shit, son, did you, you gotta stop that. Because you play Dokkan, 
you go to hell and you die. Then you go, I know, I watched to be released, Father. And the Father will go, oh, wow. My, uh, the religion allows me to have one internet video and I use it on to be released. And I love that show too. And then you both have a good powwow and you learn that he's actually one of the good fathers that doesn't abuse children. If you're in any other religion, it's a little bit different. If you're Jewish, you don't have to worry about it. There is no hell. <laughs> For everyone else, though, please look up your specific tome. And if you're atheist, I guess... No, this applies even if you're, if you're atheist, then the devil will find you and say, like, Nah, nice try, smart boy. You're going to hell if you die if you play Doka and don't think you're saved, motherfucker. <laughs> um, but if you stop playing Dokkan, I think you're pretty good. You just have to atone for your sins and either play something else. Just don't replace it with something worse, I guess, in theory. And I do not, I'm one of those people who considers a Fago an upgrade, so deal with that, motherfuckers. You're on, I'm not on Twitter, so you can't come after me. Only the, the 60 people who watch this show. And even then, I can mute you. So don't even try. Thank you for the questions, Raiders fan. Next question we got from Burning Bright. How does this download celebration compare to last year's, the Majin Buu saga to be specific? It's going to depend on part three. So here's, here's the thing, Majin Buu started very solid for me, and then they fucking took a nosedive hard. <laughs> a hardcore nose by, by not having LR Kid Buu. Probably the biggest fucking mistake they've ever made. Then they also made the free TURs the, the spirit bomb, the Super Saiyan 3 Goku that does the spirit bomb, and I think that was a huge fucking mistake. Um, in general, the later half of Majin Buu Saga, it, like, as the people on Twitter would say, you fell off. And I think that's fair to say about Majin Buu. I'm really gonna have to wait. Right now, I'm really enjoying it, but I'm gonna need to see more. Uh, I do think, again, being a part three does hurt it a whole bunch. We'll see how we feel if it wears out its welcome by the end, but, you know, keep in mind. Keep an open mind about it. Thank you very much, Burning Bright, for the question. Next, we have LA Fan. How many pulls have you done on the banners for Dokkan? You did not specify if it was the current Namek banner and, or of all time, so I'm going to have to take it as all time. In terms of all time pulls, I don't know, man. It has to be in the thousands at this point. I don't know how many stones I've wasted. Money, I have less of an idea. Maybe in terms of money, it's in a little bit of the thousands, but I stopped paying Dokkan to be honest, it, it, many years ago. Like, at best, at, at, at any given year, they might get 9 to $18, depending on if I want to buy that 30 stone pack, and that's about it. I don't go for anything more. That's definitely different from the early years of Dokkan when I played from played hardcore from years 1 to year 0 to years maybe 3? 2.5, I think? Uh, so I'm gonna go with a thousand pulls in maybe more maybe 10,000 pulls in Dokkan if The truth is done like a million pulls then I have to have done 10,000 at the very least I mean if you count tickets, it's maybe a little bit more maybe a hundred thousand I'm gonna go with a hundred thousand because I'm also forgetting for uh, free to play uh, Pulling and stuff. So I'm gonna go with a hundred thousand Thank you for the question if you met in terms of the Namek stuff. I'm pretty sure I did Four, four, three, four rotations on Goku and one on Frieza. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, and then final, our final question comes from Nailite to B, and he says, "I actually enjoy Dokkan. Is there any hope left for me?" Now, unfortunately, the answer is no. I think you're gone too far. Um, there is no coming back from this. At this point, you're slowly on a downward spiral, and unless you have, like, just a, um, an iron will, like Truth does, because Truth absolutely 100% enjoys Dokkan, no hint of any form of, like, sarcastity coming from him, and he must have some kind of fucking iron will, because I don't understand how you can enjoy Dokkan in that level, but more power to him for being able to. So I think you have no hope left, to be honest. Uh, but it's not all that bad, because, <laughs> jokes aside, I think you're actually in a perfectly fine place. Here's the thing, mobile games have actually gotten much more complicated 
So now there's not a lot of good mobile games to just kind of sit on the bathroom and play for a little bit, like play in Tiny Burst, and Dokkan is still good for that. So until Update Z comes around and potentially fucks that all up, I would say you're pretty good to keep playing Dokkan. Enjoy it for the Tiny Burst that you have it, and enjoy it until it's here. So that's what I generally feel about that. And now, I think it's time to end this show. So thank you everyone very much for another rousing episode of TV release solo. This one actually took a little bit longer than I thought it was going to take. Uh, but who would have guessed that? <laughs> I would have never have guessed I would be able to talk myself about 30 minutes of Dokkan. Um, but thank you very much for joining me. If you like this video, you can always leave a like. Feel free to comment about anything I talked about. If you have a question of any kind, you can always leave one in the YouTube and I will ask it. I will answer it in the next TV released. And that's about it. Thank you very much for joining us, and remember, here at To Be Released, we have one thing to say, and that is, don't play Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. And now, for realsy, goodbye everyone. Bye bye, see ya!